Hello, my name is Sarah. This is a Bible, and I'm going to read you some verses from 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Um, it's going to be verses 4 through 7, if you want to read along here. Um, but I'm just going to read. Okay, here we go. Love is patient. Love is kind. It is not jealous. Love is not pompous. It is not inflated. It is not rude. It does not seek its own interests. It is not quick-tempered. It does not brood over injury. It does not rejoice over wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Um, so I feel like in society, we don't really understand what real love is. Um, and the media doesn't really always help with it, um, especially in a lot of romantic comedies, because I've liked romantic comedies since I was young, like maybe since I was 10. I just, I really like them. They make me feel good. Um, but they create this like illusion of what love is or what love could be for you. And I, with romantic comedies in particular that have sex scenes, those are just so misleading because I believe um, that sex is a holy thing for marriage because, and this is what the Catholic Church teaches, it's for the couple to grow, but it's also for babies and I'm not going to have sex just to be close to someone. Um, you know, it would be a holy thing in marriage to be close, but also with the potential to have babies. And so when I see in a film, you know, two characters who really like each other, maybe even love each other, just have sex before they're married, I'm like, okay, that's not what I believe, and now I don't feel so warm and good inside. Um, and just like as a Catholic teenager, um, I read this article a couple years ago by Sister Helena Burns, I'll put a link in the description, about some romantic comedies or romantic movies about real love, and it really inspired me, and I made my own list um, of five films that are, I think, are about real love that also don't have um, sex scenes, because when I watch a romantic comedy, like, I want to protect my purity, and... I had to film this a lot of times because it's really awkward to talk about, um, but I'm just going to give you my list and we can talk about it more in the comments or maybe I can make a video series about theology of the body. I don't really know. I've wanted to make this video for a long time and I just didn't really know how to go about it and I've had to film it so many times a day and okay, here's the list. So the first film is The Princess Bride. It's a classic. It's from the 80s. Um, and the basic plot is about a girl who, like, is, she has a farm, she's normal, and she falls in love with the farm boy who, like, works for her father, but then the farm boy dies, and so she's like, I'm never gonna find love again, so when the prince wants to marry her, she's like, I don't love you, but I guess I'll marry you, um, but then her true love comes back, and it's, there's conflict, and it's super quotable, and this film to me is about real love because both characters could have walked away. You know, she had this prince. She could have just been like, well, I'm with the prince now. And there were many times in the film where her actual love interest, the farm boy, could have just been like, I'm done with this. You're a brat. You don't really love me. I'm just going to leave. But he just stayed. And, like, love is about staying um it's about working through it um and not just leaving when it gets hard because then we would all be alone um the next film is enchanted this is a disney film um and i don't know if people if like other people classify it as a rom-com but i do um because uh <laughs> Because it's about a princess who comes to the real world who falls in love with a normal single dude, man. And, yeah, the movie is more about, like, her journey as a person. And, like, discovering that, like, she is more than a cartoon character. Like, she is a person. Um, 
And I, I think that this movie is about real love because they really, um, Giselle the princess and the New York man Robert have to develop this friendship um, before they fall in love. It's not just, you're cute, let's get together. It's like they both have a lot of stuff they have to figure out before they can get together. Um, but he's just kind to her and their friends. And, yep, okay, next film. The next film is A Walk to Remember. Um, and I believe this may be one of the only Nicholas Sparks books that got turned into a movie that doesn't have a sex scene. Because it's about a girl who's a preacher's daughter who falls in love with a bad boy. And then they find out she has cancer. And this movie is about real love. Um, because... Like The Princess Bride, um, the boy who falls in love with the preacher's daughter could have just left. He could have been like, you have cancer, I like you a lot, but I don't want to be with someone who's going to die. Like, that sounds really insensitive. Um, but it's a lot emotionally to love someone who has cancer. And this guy just loves her so much. And... Um, I, I like it because it shows that teenagers have the capacity to um, to love more than the surface. Like, this guy doesn't stay with her because she's beautiful. He doesn't stay with her because he's, like, for selfish reasons. Like, he just sees who she is inside, and he loves that. And he doesn't care that she's going to die. He's going to be there for her until she goes. And even after... Um, it's kind of complicated to explain, but it's just beautiful. And it's definitely a real demonstration of what love is. Um, it's a great film. Um, the next film is The Lake House. Uh, this starred Sandra Bullock and Keanu Reeves. It came out in like 2006, I believe. Um, but it's about a man and a woman who fall in love, despite the fact that he, they meet... Um, how do I explain the plot? I should just, like, read the back of the DVD case. Um, so basically, she lives in a house, and she puts a letter in the mailbox, and then Keanu Reeves gets the letter. But Keanu Reeves is in 2004, and Sandra Bullock is in 2006, and somehow they can communicate through the mailbox through time. Um, and again, this one is about real love because they have to wait. Um, you know, they can only communicate through these letters, and... Um, this one is interesting because he, they actually do give up, you know, they write the letters and they try to make it work, but then it doesn't because they're in different times. And so she's like, I'm not doing this. Um, and she goes and she lives with another man and, um, it's on this list because we don't see anything like kind of messes with your purity because they live together. But anyways, she's living with this dude. She's not happy. She doesn't really love him. But she's trying to move on because she really loved Keanu Reeves. And then when she finds out that Keanu Reeves, that she can be with Keanu Reeves, she fights for him. She doesn't just go, oh, well, I'm living with this other dude. Like, she does fight for love, for happiness. Um, okay, and the last film. I need to do a whole vlog on this last film. This last film is one of my favorites. I love it so much. It's called Dan in Real Life. It stars it stars Steve Carell. Um, and this movie is about real love because this widower, you know, he has these three daughters. He falls in love with his brother's girlfriend. And instead of and when the whole movie plays out, you know, the Steve Carell character could have just been like, you know what, kids, I'm your dad, I'm not going to love her. And he could have been, okay, brother, I love you, I'm not going to be with your girlfriend. Or he could have been like, okay, I'm going to just go be with the girl and everything will work out. Like, he has to fix things with his daughters and his brother and the girlfriend. Like, it doesn't just work out. It just, it's so real. Um, and there's just this sacrifice there, um, that I don't see a lot in films about romance. Um, you know, it's not just about this one guy, like, it's just, it's about a family having to make sacrifices in order to just 
work. Um, and it's beautiful. And I could talk all day about it. The music is so good. This vlog is way longer than I thought it would be. And I know that, like, video is a visual medium. Like, I'm sorry that I can't do pictures here. I'm sorry. Yep. Okay. Well, thank you for watching. This has been so awkward. At least from my point of view. Maybe you liked it. Maybe I should have scripted it. Maybe I should have filmed it yesterday and just posted it today. But life. And just thank you for watching. If you liked it, press the like button because I... It's just... Like, I really wanted to make this video, and I've wanted to make it for a long time. But it's just really hard for me to talk about why these films matter to me, because I've been judged before about what I believe about love and sex, and now I'm just putting it on the internet. So, you could just give me a like, or subscribe, or leave a comment. That would be cool. And... Yeah, I could have just done a film review. I could have just reviewed Kung Fu Panda 3. Oh my gosh. <sighs> Darn. Okay. Maybe next time there will be a Kung Fu Panda 3 review. Okay. I'm gonna go now because homework's a thing. Thank you for watching. <laughs> Bye, guys.